Hello guys and welcome back to another episode of Paint by Minis. My name's Adam and in this episode we are going to take a look at how to paint marble using an airbrush. This is a super quick and easy technique so I hope you learn something. So just for this example I'm going to use a storm car shield but this technique works better on large flat open areas so shoulder pauldrons, shields, even weapon blades can be really good. I wouldn't advise this technique in highly detailed areas, it can end up looking a bit too busy with everything going on, so stick to large flat open areas. But wherever you're painting it on, the first step is getting a decent primer on the model. For me, I've just used a flat grey primer from Halfords, but you can use whatever primer you prefer, the colour really doesn't matter. So the colour of marble that we're going for in this technique is a white cream marble that's got some brown and red tones within it. So to get things started we are going to put a base of a ready brown onto the model. My ready brown is going to be made of a 1 to 5 mix, so 1 part burnt umber and 5 parts of this processed magenta. I'm using inks just because they shoot through the airbrush much easier than regular paints, but you can use whatever warm brown colour that you've got to hand. So now that's all mixed up, we're just going to pop that into the airbrush and shoot a nice even layer across the shield. We just want to make sure that it's a nice even coverage everywhere. Now for the next steps I find it easier to have both hands to work with, so I'm just using a little bit of blue tack here to tack down the shield facing towards me. So this stuff here is the real secret weapon behind this technique. This is fine gauge steel wool and it's usually used as like a finishing material in woodworking or metalworking or as Brillo pads around the house. But for us we're going to use it a little differently. The first thing that you'll want to do is peel away a little bit of the steel wool away from the main ball of the wool and just run it through your fingers, just be very careful because it is still a little bit sharp and just work it until the strands gather together in to form a few wispy nest kind of things, something like this. Using these wispy strands that we made we're going to move them around the shield and spray a white acrylic ink over the top to give the effect of some of the reddy brown colour showing through in streaks underneath the white. So to get the best results I find it good to take it slow and steady, move the mask over to a bit of the shield, spray a small burst of the white ink take the mask away and look at the results that you've got and then just move the mask up a little bit and spray a little bit more. It's really easy to add a little bit more but it's very very difficult and almost impossible to take any of the white ink away. Also try not to worry about bringing all of the white to maximum opacity. Leaving a few bits that are slightly darker showing more of the red through is really good to add variety. So here's what my shield looks like after we've finished up with the white airbrushing. So now that we've got a decent marble looking base to start working off, we're going to add some extra details in some transparent layers. So here on my wet palette I've got three colours mixed up, I've got Sephirum Sepia, Brightclim Flesh Shade and Griff Charger Grey. These are all diluted down 50% with water. Although these are contrast and shade paints, I'm not using them in that manner, I'm using them more as a glaze. So we're just going to pick up a very small amount from the wet palette and just make a very small streak on the shield. Try and follow the lines that we've already made and apply the colour over the lines or maybe a bit under and block them in a bit. This will lead to quite a natural looking marble colouring. Try not to overdo the effect and use it quite sparingly. We're not looking to glaze over the entire shield, only very small select areas to look like different forms of minerals within the marble. And this is what we're looking like now that we've finished up the glaze step. As you can see we've not overdone it at all and we've just placed the glaze in a very few select areas. But that's the marble basically finished now. 
The last thing we are going to do though is apply a decent gloss coat across the entire shield. I find with marble that a good gloss finish really gives the depth that marble needs to look realistic. In this instance I'm using Humbrol's clear gloss varnish just because this is the most easily accessible here in the UK. I'm pretty sure any brand will be good. Using the airbrush I'm just going to apply a couple of thin layers. It does take a little bit to build up this gloss varnish so I apply one thin layer leave it to dry completely and then I do another couple of coats again leaving them to dry in between. So when you're happy with the amount of gloss that you've got on the model, that's it finished. I really hope you've enjoyed the video and found it useful. Once you get used to the technique, it's actually a very fast and efficient way to paint marble. And don't forget, it doesn't stop here. Use this on your bases, use this on lots of different models and see what effects you can get. Also try different colour combinations. Up here we've done a warm marble with some brown tones, but do a black marble, do anything. Now that you've got the technique, just experiment. So thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you in the next video.